Yeah, again, I got something to say. I've been thinking about relationships and a thought came to mind. If you take an animal that is used to being out in the open and you put it in a small cage, as soon as you let that animal out, it's going to go crazy. Or you risk the chance of having that animal get real wild and, and get real angry from containing it. A lot of times we get in relationships with somebody who's used to being single and used to being free. And as soon as we start dating them, we put restrictions on everything. They can't hang with their friends no more. They have a curfew. They have to delete all their Facebook friends. Or, or if, if there's any ex that's on their Facebook friend, you have to delete them and all of this stuff, right? There's a guideline. Yeah, certain things that should be respectable. But some things just go overboard. Like... How can I expect a woman not to be with her friends when she had friends before me? You know, um, we're adults. How can I set a curfew and say, well, you need to be in the house for 12 o'clock, but I can come and go as I please because I fly all over the world or I work, um, you know, at different hours of the night in the studio or doing different things. You know, that's not fair. And a lot of people in relationships are dealing with this, you know. Now, you tell a woman she can't have no friends or a guy. And you hold them back from everything. Well, sooner or later, all that pressure that you're building up from keeping them contained is going to explode. And you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a big problem. You'll cause somebody to cheat more by holding them back than to let them be free. Honestly, it is the truth. You know, um, as a man, you know, having something to compare my wife to makes me appreciate her more than not having nothing to compare her to. And a lot of y'all won't get that. A lot of y'all won't get that. But some men going to understand what I'm saying. Having something to compare my wife to makes me appreciate her more than not having nothing to compare her to. And that goes for women too, but I think more men will grasp that concept. You know, my focus is to take care of home and do the best that I can. If there's somebody else that want to do better and she want to go to somebody else, then guess what? He can have Jacob. Bye. You know, I'm not going to sit there and run after somebody who want to be with somebody else. I'm not going to do that, you know. Um, I know for a fact, if I take care of home and I do everything that I can do under my powers and she communicates to me everything she desire and my role is to fulfill that, then it makes it that much easier moving on knowing I've done everything possible to please her and she just want to be with somebody else than me holding back from pleasing her because she pissed me off. And now I'm wondering, could I have done more? Is there more that I could have done to salvage my relationship? But since... You know, she upset me. I'm holding back my love to punish her. And we do that also. We punish each other with love, with everything. You know, well, I'm not doing this for him because he burned me up. No, I realize something. When a woman is doing something for me, willingly, it makes me want to be there and pretty much turn everybody else away. You know, when you that good and you treating me, you honoring me and respecting me, I'm looking at everybody like, this is mine. Like, I don't even want you, my girl, because you can't compare to what I have. But whenever you complaining and running your mouth, climb, uh, 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 go on, just, just complaining about everything, bickering, your lip on the floor, then what makes you think I'm going to want to come home? I'm not, because I'm not coming home to a happy place. Your home should not be a battleground. It should be a place of peace. So whenever you have a home that's stirred up with trouble and commotion, you wonder why your mate don't want to come home. Because at the end of the day, it may be worth losing being out there than to be home. It may be worth losing what you have at home to experiment with, with, with what's out there because you're not even happy at home. So you're going to take that chance. So, you know, in relationships, man, y'all communicate. But all of these boundaries that setting where you got to get off of this, you got to get off of that. Man, look, I was a man before I came in this relationship and I'm going to be a man when I leave. I'm going to respect you. I'm going I'm to fulfill my role as a man and I'm going to honor you. But I'm not going to eliminate my whole life for you. No, you go come first if you're my wife. In a relationship, you ain't my wife. I'm sorry. I'm going to take care of you. We're going to be cool. But you're not going to get a wife perk if you ain't my wife. But as my wife, I'm going to put you first. That's off the top. But everything else going to fall from, going to trickle down from that. But I'm going to make sure I take care of home. But we're not going to have limitations of, oh, you can't come at this time of night and this and that. Because I'm not living. And I'm not going to be in a relationship that doesn't allow me to live. If y'all will, that's on y'all. So take this bit of advice and, and evaluate your relationship and communicate with your mate. We adults. If we can't come to common ground with things, then why even be in a relationship? 
Why be with somebody that set restrictions that I can't even be free to live? That ain't love. No. Focus your energy on pleasing me and keeping me home than to be worrying about why I'm not home. Because I might not be home because of you. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't see. You may be the reason. So check yourself. Thank you.